What is going on guys welcome back in today's video we're going to learn how to build a basic option screener in python so let us get right into it all right so this video is not going to be a very long one because there's just not too much to talk about from a python perspective when it comes to option screening because we basically have a library this library allows us to get the option chains uh, to get the values like asks and bits and expiration dates and uh, all the different things that we might be interested in. We can learn how to filter, but that's it. So the code is not going to be too much today, which is why I want to start with a little bit of financial knowledge in the beginning. Uh, even though this channel is not a financial channel, I don't want to become uh, a stock investing channel here, at least not yet. Um, so we're just going to cover the basics of options for those of you who don't know what options are, but know what stocks are, for example, because I don't want to explain the whole stock market. But before we get into that, I want to mention, as always, since this is a financial video, this video is not investing advice. It's not financial advice. I'm not a financial professional. Uh, when you work with options or stocks, your capital is at risk and you, uh, you are responsible for any gains or losses that you make. So I'm not responsible for anything that you do in the markets. I'm just showing you my Python education, maybe one or two things about options in general. I'm not responsible and this video is not financial advice just to make that clear as always. So let's just cover the very basic terms uh, of what a call option is and what a put option is. And I'm not going to pretend that I'm super educated here, but a basic, uh, a basic definition, I, I should be able to give you a basic definition here. Now a call option is basically a bet that the price of a stock is going to go up. So an option gives you the right, but not the obligation to buy a stock in the future or not only a stock, any asset like a bond, a commodity, uh, there is an asset and this option allows you to buy, um, but it, it only gives you the right, it doesn't give you the obligation to buy this uh, security, this asset at a specific price. So basically if I say, okay, uh, I buy a option, an option that allows me to buy Facebook stocks for $10 per share, at, I don't know, today we have the 21st of July, let's say it allows me to do that up until the 28th of July, I could exercise that option and say, okay, I want to buy the Facebook shares because because they're way, um, way more expensive than what my strike price is. This is what the strike price is, the, the price that I am allowed to buy these stocks for if I have the option, if I want to exercise the option. Um, now, of course, I have to pay a premium for that option to get this right. So this right costs money. Someone sells that contract to me. But a call option basically is just uh, I have the right. Let's let's put it down right, but not obligation to buy to buy a certain asset uh, up to a certain date, for example. Um, so this is what a call option is. A put option is basically the same thing, but not to buy, but to sell. So I have the right, but not the obligation to sell a certain asset up to a certain date, up to a certain date. There you go. So those are the two types of options that we have. Now a call option is more bullish. I say, okay, this company is going to succeed and this is why I buy some call options. A put option is more bearish. I say, okay, I don't believe in that company. So I wanna have the right to sell at the current price because I predict that the price uh, or I bet that the price is going to be lower uh, in a couple of weeks, months or years from now. So that is the basic definition. Now let us get into the coding because I don't want to talk too much about options here. This is still a programming channel. Uh, the library that we're going to need here is called Yahoo Fin, which refers obviously to the Yahoo Finance. So you're going to start CMD and you're going to install Yahoo underscore Fin. This is what we need. And besides that, we're also going to make use of pandas. So make sure you have pandas installed, pip install pandas like that. Uh, those are the two packages that we're going to need. And first of all, we need to specify, or actually, first of all, we need to import them. We're going to say from Yahoo underscore fin import options. And we're going to say import pandas SPD. There you go. So what we're going to do now is we're going to decide which stock uh, we're looking for. So for example, what kind of options are we looking for? Let's say we're looking for options 
uh, on the Apple stock. So let's say stock is Apple and I want to know what options are out there for Apple. And in order to see that I can get the option chain, uh, which is basically just, uh, which I can basically get by saying options dot get options chain and then the stock. So the ticker symbol of the stock. Uh, and if I want to do that, I can just store this in a chain chain equals options that get option chain and then I can print that chain and you're going to see that there is a problem if we run it like that it's not really a problem but we cannot see all the columns because pandas by default says okay I'm not going to show everything so we have a bunch of dots here we can change that by just saying pd dot set underscore option uh, display uh, what is it display dot max underscore columns is going to be none. So we don't have a maximum here. And if we do that, we're going to see all the values. So you can see that we have, what do we have here? We have uh, the contract name, which is this year. We have the last trade. So when it happened, uh, last trade date, we have the strike price, which is uh, what we have negotiated. So the strike price of 75 for a call option means I have the right to buy this security for 75. Um, then we have the last price that this option was sold for. We have the bid, which is basically what people are willing to pay for it. We have the ask, which is what the seller is asking for. So of course, either the seller has to lower the price or the buyer has to increase what they're willing to pay for. Then a transaction is going to happen. We have the change. We have um, the change in percentage. We have the volume. We have open interest and volatility and so on. The important thing is basically the strike price, maybe the ask bid, the last price, uh, and of course, the expiration date or yeah, the expiration date, basically. Uh, where is the expiration date? Do we have it somewhere here? Or do we have to query it separately? Now, let's let's just go ahead and say that we only want to see the call options so that we make it a little bit uh, a little bit more readable here. So we're going to say chain and calls. And by default, we're going to get all the call options. Now, if we are interested in call options that expire before a certain or on a certain day, we can do that by saying get option chains, uh, get options chain. And here we specify also the date. So I want to say, okay, give me all the Apple options that ex uh, that expire on a certain day. For example, July 23, 2021, which is in two days. And if I do that, I will get only the options that expire in two days. And I'm not going to get any other options here. So as you can see in the contract name, you can see the expiration date here. Um, and I can see what they're trading for, what the strike price is and so on. Uh, if you don't know what a date is, for example, not every date works. Let's see if 29 works. Maybe it's going to work, but maybe it's not going to work. Uh, because not every expiration date is available, then we're going to get this error here. If we want to know what expiration dates are possible, we can call the function um, print and the function is called options dot get expiration dates for a security for a stock ticker Apple. And then we're going to get a list of the expiration dates that we can look for. And you can see the next one is July 30. August 6 and August 13, August 20 and so on. So I could go with August 20 here, August 20, there you go. And if I run this, I will see the options that expire on August 20th, which you can also see in the contract name here. Um, so this is a very basic way to just show all the call options. We can do the same thing with puts and I'm only going to get the put options here. Um, and this is not the only way in which we can do that. We can also just go right, uh, right ahead and say not option chain, uh, options chain, but give me the calls, give me only the calls. Then of course I cannot use this as a dictionary here. Um, but then I would get all the calls and I can do the same thing with the puts as well. So I can say get puts and I'm only going to get the put, uh, the put options here. Um, now, this is actually all you can do with that library. But the important thing is that you can now go ahead and screen for certain criteria. This is what a screener does. Now, 
those functions get expiration dates, get uh, get puts, get calls, and get option uh, options chain uh, are the only functions that are actually important here. But what we can do is we can use pandas to filter out certain things. So for example, I can say, okay, I'm interested in Apple options and call options. So let's change this to calls again. And what I get here is a pandas data frame. So what I can do is I can query uh, based on certain criteria. For example, I can say, okay, I'm interested in those elements of the chain where the chain strike price is below, I don't know, let's say 200, for example. Uh, does this make sense? Do we have anything above 200? Uh, let's go a little bit lower, let's say below 100. Um, outside of those square brackets, of course. So this basically says, give me all the rows where the strike price is less than 100. And if I run this as the last print statement, I'm going, uh, I'm going to get only the options that expire on this date and have a strike price less than 100, as you can see here. So 95 is the last, uh, the last one. Maybe if I say less or equal to 100, I'm going to get one more because I think 100 should be uh, an available strike price. Let's see. There you go. You can see an option here. Um, and I can add all sorts of criteria, whatever I want to add. For example, I can say, okay, uh, I want to have a volatility that is low or whatever. I don't know. Let's say, and chain volatility has to be less than, now I'm not sure if this is a string or a number, but let's just say it has to be less than a hundred. Not sure if this is going to work just because of the format. No, the true value of a series is ambiguous. Okay, uh, but but I can do the same thing with the bit or with the ask price. And I can also uh, get the date and format it and say, okay, I want this to be uh, the, the last trade to to have happened. Or is this is the problem that I'm using and here? Let's just see. Uh, let's say I don't have strike, but I have volatility. get rid of all that here. Maybe this works. There you go. And maybe this is going to work, maybe not. No, because because I don't know how to write volatility. Or do I know volatility doesn't work? Okay, let's just see what it's written like. But basically, what you can do is you can just specify criteria like it has to be between this and that. Let's just see what it's called. Implied volatility. Okay, sorry. So I need to say chain implied or actually chain chain implied volatility is less than 100. Now, again, I'm not sure if this if this is going to work just because it has a percentage sign in it. Um, yeah, as you can see, the one is a string and the one is an integer. We can do string formatting. It's, it's not a big deal. We just uh, remove the percentage and uh, we then turn the whole thing into a float. Actually, I think this should be quite easily, we just, uh, quite uh, easy. We just say int of chain implied volatility dot replace, um, replace percentage with nothing. If this doesn't work, we're not going to play around with this anymore. But this shouldn't be too difficult. Oh, integer is probably a bad thing. We should go with float. Let's see if that works. If it doesn't work, we're just going to go with bit or ask. But you can filter for... Uh, cannot convert a series to... Okay, just forget about this. Uh, but we can go and say the chain ask has to be below 100. And that should at least work. There you go. So now we only have um, rows where the ask is less than 100 for whatever reason. Uh, and then I can go ahead and say again, chain, um, chain strike has to be less than 100 as well. And so I can introduce multiple um, what do we have here? Okay, just a warning. 
but so we can we can chain we can just uh, combine multiple things so for example now the price ha the strike price has to be less than 100 and here it also has uh, the ask price also has to be less than 100. So this is how this works. You can just screen your options. You can also change this to Tesla, for example. Of course, you need to, uh, to care about the expiration dates here. Um, but with Tesla, we'll get different results here, but I can also use this for stock screening. Or maybe I'm not gonna get anything here because, uh, because I don't have any values that fit this criteria, obviously, but I can remove this because Tesla is a little bit more expensive, but I can print a whole chain if I want to and then use different uh, different filters. For example, not less than 100, but less than 600, for example, because the um, the asks here are very expensive for Tesla. But this is how you build a simple option screener in Python. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.